Hey everybody, how are you doing? It's Dr. Carmen Bryant and this is Car Chronicles. How are you guys doing? Good to see you guys. You guys ready? Let's do it. What is a vulnerable narcissist? A vulnerable narcissist, vulnerable, a vulnerable, vulnerable narcissist is also known as a covert, covert narcissist. And the covert or the vulnerable narcissist is highly sensitive to these are the ones they're not hypersensitive in the sense of hypersensitive to people like empaths you know they're very hypersensitive to the people around them they're hypersensitive to any type of criticism anything that makes them feel bad about themselves because they already feel bad about themselves they are very they have a very low self-esteem they have they have serious problems with rejection and abandonment they're so hypersensitive to people's remarks and, and that sense of criticism that they'll get offended very quickly when people are making remarks that are not intended to hurt them in the first place. They misconstrue everything. You know, anything that anybody says is a personal attack against them. These are some very deeply insecure individuals that have a deep sense of feelings of inad inadequacy, a deep sense of insecurity and shame. And they crave attention and admiration. They have to have attention and admiration. A lot of them, uh, you'll find them as the um, the somatic narcissists. You know, those that are somatic narcissists. And those, they crave attention. They crave admiration. You've got to say wonderful things about them. If you don't say great and wonderful things about them, you're not even worth their time because you are hostile and you are jealous over them. And they feel that everyone is jealous over them because they're gifted. But on the inside, they're insecure. They have these deep feelings of inadequacy. They feel rejected. A lot of them go through abandonment issues. Their greatest fear is ridicule and criticism. Even something like constructive criticism. For example, if you're working at a job, obviously you may get, you know, your annual job review, you know, and you need that constructive criticism. You need someone to tell you where you need to better yourself or where you need to, you know, what are you doing good? In the military, we used to do it all the time. You know, let me give you these things right here that you are doing good. I feel like they're the strength of you. Continue to work on these issues, I mean, on these areas because these are some strengths that you have. These areas right here need to build, you need to build the strength. These are some weak areas that you need to work on. They don't take it as constructive criticism. They don't take it as you're trying to help them move forward. They take that once you tell them these are some areas that need improvement, immediately they take it personal because now you're taking a direct shot at me and you're proving the feelings of inadequacies that I already have. So now I have to project on you because you are the cruel and hateful person. You are the unempathetic person. You are the person that's trying to bring me down and you don't want to see me advance. If anyone offers them advice, these are some things you can do to improve these areas. The very first thing they're thinking is, you're only saying that because you're trying to set me up. And I don't need improvement like that. That's something. And they'll tell you, you're projecting. You're projecting because these are your feelings of inadequacy. They project how they feel onto another person. And projection just means that you become like the projector screen and they project. They are the projector that's projecting everything negative about themselves on you. And you'll begin to question your own self. That gaslighting you begin to question your own self like am I really trying to hurt this person am I really giving you this information to help you because that's what I thought I was doing you start questioning all your management management skills you start assessing like now I've done this for years now why all of a sudden is it a problem because of the fact that that narcissist cannot handle any type of criticism any type of improvement that they need to make they can't handle you telling them the truth that vulnerable narcissist or that covert narcissist is so sensitive about how other how other people view them that they create this world this this unrealistic world this unrealistic view of them they're going to make sure that they look and sound smarter than the average person even to a point listen even to a point where they'll start wearing glasses and don't need glasses at all because they think you know if they hear someone else comment like someone wearing glasses like oh you look so smart those are the kind of things we say to kids. You look so smart, you know, and they'll hear comments like that. And then they'll start wearing glasses and give you an explanation as to why they have to wear glasses. And they never even been to a doctor to wear glasses. They just wear glasses because of the fact that you told someone that they look smart. So now they assume that if I wear glasses, I look smart. I know you guys are thinking nah, that's petty, but, but you got to remember that a person that has narcissistic personality disorder is not a rational thinking individual. They've got to be the smartest person in the room. You know, you could have a Harvard degree. You could be a nuclear physicist. It, it doesn't matter what or who you are. They're going to be smarter than you. They'll have you questioning a, your own degree. They will have you questioning your own degree that you, you've got a degree. You're a doctor, a, a pastor, a lawyer. It, it doesn't matter. 
they're going to, because of the fact that you know something that they don't know, they're going to make you question the education that you receive. And they'll tell you that's dumb and that's not true. And that's not what statistics say. And they'll make up their own statistics. And it sounds really good, but it's garbage because it's not real. They've always got to look better than the average person. I mean, to a point where they buy a lot of, now I know some of us have done it and do it or whatever. You know, you kind of buy the bootleg purses and the bootleg red bottoms. You got purple bottoms, but you done told people they red bottoms. You done paid to the bottom and, and people are looking at it. They can tell the difference between the authentic items that, that a person may have. You can tell that the stitches on a Louis Vuitton or a coach is supposed to look like this and you can show them where that's not authentic because they're arguing with you and they put it out there. That's not even an argument to have. If you want them to argue, let them argue. Let let them be the thousandaires that they are. You ain't got to argue with them. You know, and some of them are even so bold where, you know, they have these fancy cars these luxury cars but they're not gonna let you ever come to their house because they live in an apartment or they're never gonna let you come to their house because they don't have anything all the money that they're spending on these vehicles and their clothes is where is lacking in their home some of their families don't have to struggle to eat some of their families are struggling to eat some of their families are struggling to keep the lights on because any dime that that narcissist gets they're going to get botox injection they're going to get breast jobs they're going to get a butt lift a bazillion butt lift they're going to get you know men they're going to buy these clothes and this motorcycle and this car right here and these clothes right here and this clone right here and this watch right here and argue with you that the watch is real some of them may be real some of them may not be real but they'll argue with you i had one tell me that on um, rolex watches are made in iraq and I had to think twice about what they were talking about. I said, Rolex, they are not made in Iraq. What are you talking about? Where did you get this from? Rolexes are not made in Iraq because they had an Iraq, uh, Iraqi uh, Rolex on their arm and it was not a real Rolex. But think about it. They will gaslight you into making you believe. And then the conversation was so good that it would have you believing that they were telling the truth. But they will go all out to make sure that they present themselves a certain way in front of people. They want you to believe that they have all this money. They want you to believe that they drive the best cars, the finest cars. And, and, and some of them, listen, and some of those covert, vulnerable, uh, somatic narcissists, you guys wonder, you know, why did he leave me for her? Or why did he leave me for him? Or is, is he or she better than me or whatever? Really, uh, somebody is going to keep some arm candy on their arm. You know, they're going to have the best of the best. So when they're looking for a victim, they're going to look for one, especially if you're beautiful. And as some of you are looking at the new narcissist and you're thinking he's so handsome or, or she's so beautiful, that gives you a lot of credit for yourself. Let you know what you, what type of person you are. Beautiful and handsome, attractive yourself. Very educated because they look for educated people. They look for people that make them look a certain way. It has nothing to do with that individual, but they look for a person that gives them credibility or street creds, whatever, but they give them credibility. They make them look a certain way. Look what I can pull. Look what I can get. So stop beating yourself up because you're just as gorgeous. You're just as beautiful. You're just as smart. You're just as innovative. You're just as, you know, whatever you are, you are just that good. Stop beating up the other supply. Let the supply find out for them. The new supply find out for themselves. But they're going to have the best of the best. So don't think. Now, true enough, from time to time, you're going to see one or two little uglies come through there. But nine times out of ten, if it's out of characteristic, out of the characteristic of that narcissist, and that is not the type of person that they're normally with, you know they are desperate for some fuel. So they'll get anything. That's why I tell you guys, even in the LBGTQ community, you have to be very careful because there are some narcissists that come into the community because they need fuel. They're not truly a part of the LBGTQ plus community. And they will come in there and pretend because they need fuel. So they have to find supply anywhere that they can. And they find the most vulnerable people sometimes going through things, have their own personal struggles, and they pick you off. You know, so you got to be very careful because a, a narcissist is a narcissist is a narcissist. And wherever some of them are, are narcissists that, that, that look for opportunity. So they'll, it doesn't matter. They'll cross lines. And then for those of you that have not come out, they'll threaten you and blackmail you. You know, and then if you say that they used to date with this individual, they'll make you look like you're crazy. Make you sound like you're crazy. Make like something, make, make it look like something is wrong with you. They're smear campaigning you because they're not going to out themselves. But a vulnerable narcissist, which is called a, called a covert narcissist, is one that is very fragile on the inside. They cannot handle criticism. They cannot handle uh, thinking that people may see them one way when they try to present themselves another. That's why they work so hard to look a certain way in public in front of people, rich, wealthy.